I came across something you never see at the car shows. It is a Mustang II, and I want to introduce you to the owner of this car. This is David from Faith, Texas. Hey, y'all. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this car? This is a 1978 Mustang II. Started out as a stock Cobra II. Eventually became a customized Monroe Handler Mustang II. What is Monroe Handler? So the Monroe Handler, the Monroe Shock Absorber Company, commissioned a company in 1978 to build advertisement cars, marketing cars, and they called them the Mus Monroe Handler Mustang. And so it was a body kit that they put on, made out of metal at that time. I think they built like seven of them out of metal. And then eventually they uh, turned them into fiberglass molds and they started selling them that way. Well, that happened for a few years and then they disappeared and nobody bought the molds anymore. Well, so I was buying parts from a company up in Minneapolis area and that guy acquired the original molds for the Mustang, to, uh, Mustang handler package and I bought one. And really the reason why I wanted to buy the handler package is because it allowed me easily to get bigger wheels and tires under the car. Now, I know there's other ways to do it, but that's the way I wanted to do it. Right. So that's the Monroe handler package. It was a marketing gimmick by Monroe. Well, we learned something new today. What engine's in the car? So this has the original 302 block but it's been built into a 331 stroker. It has GT40 heads, all the normal upgrades like Edelbrock and uh, intake, things like that. I haven't dynoed it yet, but I'm hoping for like 400 horsepower. How long did it take y'all to build it? So it did materialize over about six and a half years. Six and a half. This is really the first big road trip for the car. I live in Faith, Texas, which is about an hour and a half from here. And so, it was a challenge to get here a little bit because we had a little bit of an overheat problem, which we're gonna fix, but it handled great, rode smooth, beautiful. What's the, what's the most memorable thing about building this car? Wow, probably when we took the Sawzall to the back end, the wheel well, we cut like two inches up into the wheel well to put the, the fiberglass piece over the top of the original metal structure. So just, just putting the blade. Just to, putting the blade to the metal. Yeah, and what's the, <laughs> what was like a heartache or a setback on this car that made it where you almost wanted to quit. My build went through many hands, right? I originally started at a local shop in Rockwall, and I went there because I wanted a shop that would help, let me help build the car. And so these guys agreed to let me help build the car. So I got in there, we stripped the whole thing down, all the way down to bare metal, took everything off of the car, and then we built it up from there. Well, about the time that that was done and it was painted, but not yet finished, they went out of business. And so my builder friend, uh, Tim, I had, had a huge garage at his house. So we finished the car at his house. Just the start, stop, start, stop. It was a little frustrating. So what advice would you give somebody if they were gonna build a show car? Right, so I spent way more money on this car than I planned to. So probably the best advice is if you can't afford to buy it done, make sure you have a solid plan about what you wanna do because it took extra time and money for me because I kept, and it's my own fault, I kept saying, well, what if we do this? What if we do that, right? Yeah. So don't you make a plan and don't fear from it, right? Just go get the car done and then get it on the road and then make changes later. One more thing, if your car could say anything about you, like if, if your car was talking to you because of the time you spent with it, what would your car say about it? They don't let this rookie work on me. <laughs> Is there anybody you'd like to thank for this build? Yeah, my, my builder, Tim, he stayed with me the whole time. I, I don't know if he'll care if I throw out his last name, but he's the father of Brian Bestine. And if you know Brian Bestine, he does top-end SEMA quality cars uh, out of his shop in Roy City. So Tim is Brian's dad. Yeah. Okay. So he's got a lot of pedigree. He's built a lot of cars. He's an engineer. He's got the engineer's mind. Well, but Dave, he's a good guy. So thanks for telling us about your car. It's yep. unique. We appreciate the hell out of it. All right. Thank you. Thank y'all for watching. All right. Y'all have a good day.